Hey, listen up, fellas. Tony Soprano here, and today I'm gonna spill the cannoli on how the mafia waltzed into the world of labor unions. Grab a seat. It's gonna be a wild ride. So, yeah, see, labor corruption. It's when these wise guys misuse their union power for their own personal gain. But then there's labor racketeering. And that, my friends, is like labor corruption with a mobster twist. Picture me, Tony Soprano, at a union meeting, one hand holding a meatball sub and the other, well, let's just say it's holding something a bit more persuasive. Now, these mobsters, we weren't just sitting around enjoying a plate of spaghetti. No, we were out there shaking down employers, telling them, hey, nice business you got there. It'd be a shame if something would have happened to it. Unlawful strikes, work stoppages, picketing, you name it, we did it. And that if that didn't work, we'd cozy up to the bosses, whisper sweet nothings in their ears, and bam, they'd be bribing us faster than you can say fuck the bait it. Here's the kicker, folks. Labor racketeering, it's been around since the early 20th century, and everybody knew about it. We were doing it all. Extortion, embezzlement, fraud, violence, hijacking, and even denying union members their rights. It's like we had a mobster's handbook on how to be bad guys. Now, let's talk strategy. You could look at labor racketeering as some kind of mobster team, building exercise. Or you could focus on the crimes we pulled off, like it was a crime buffet with extra garlic knots. And don't forget about us offenders. We could be considered white collar criminals or organized crime aficionados. We were like the multi-talented Renaissance men of crime. But here's the grand finale, my friends. The 20th century history of American organized crime wouldn't be complete without mentioning the Cosa Nostra crime families and their union connections. It's like we were matchmakers bringing management and labor together. These Italian, American mobsters strolled into the unions in the 1920s and 30s, and we were like, hey, you need a little muscle. We got you. We were the labor union's Tony Stark without the Iron Man suit. And then the Fed showed up, and they weren't there for the Kennelly. They hit us right where it hurt, the unions. They brought out the big guns for Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, or RICO for short. It was like the government's way of saying, Time to pay the piper, Tony. They played chess while we were still trying to figure out Monopoly. And guess who ended up behind bars? Yep, not Tony Soprano, that's for sure. So, there you have it, folks. A tale of mobsters, unions, and enough shakedowns to make your head spin. It's a story of crime, corruption, and cannoli. And it's a chapter of my life that'll go down in the history books. Or maybe just on the big screen.